Hey guys, so be warned, there will be spoilers ahead. So if you haven't seen Knuckles on Paramount Plus, you might want to stop the video here. Also, the show is only six episodes long and each episode is between 25 to 30 minutes long. So you can knock it out in less than three hours. Uh, not that long of a show. So again, you might want to stop the video here, go check it out, then come back. Anyway, that was, that's, that was your warning. Let's move on. So, this show definitely has both positives and negatives. However, it's one of those shows where the positives most definitely outweigh the negatives. So, I'm going to go over the negatives first, and then we're going to end this in the positives. So, for starters, um, minor, minor gripe. In fact, you could refer to it as a meaningless fanboy gripe. In the first episode, we have Ben Schwartz, Colleen O'Shaughnessy, and Tika Sumter from the movies appear as Sonic, Tails, and Maddie. And then they don't show up for the rest of the show. Now, I understand that this is Knuckles' show. I 100% am okay with him taking up a good 90% of the screen time um, and those three characters be put in the on the back burner. However, um, and I also understand that maybe, maybe there was a mandate from the studio to only use them in one episode. However, by putting them in the first episode, that creates a bookend where you have, where they establish what Knuckles arc will be for the show which is to find his place on Earth, find a way to figure, figure out how he fits in to this new world. But then, at, after he goes through his journey and he figures it out, there's no other bookend to match the first one. There's, no, there's nothing there. He doesn't go back home. You don't see those three characters again. And it just you get to the final credits roll, and it just feels like something's missing where there should have been a scene there at the end where he gets back home and he's fitting in again and maybe it could parallel the scene where everything fell apart at home, which is the breakfast scene. Maddie's trying to serve breakfast to Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. And Knuckles, of course, destroyed the house to build himself an iron throne um, and turned the living room into uh, a fighting pit. <laughs> um and they could have referenced that with them having a proper breakfast, maybe even cooked by Knuckles. However, the only human food that Knuckles would know how to cook is the type of kosher food that Wade's mom um, was serving for the Shabbat's dinner. So um, that would have been really funny if they all sat down to breakfast and he brings in all these kosher dishes, all this, this traditional Jewish meal to... <laughs> to uh, to serve, to uh, feed his family for breakfast. Um, just saying, it just felt like there was something missing and I felt like they shot themselves in the foot by showing the Sonic characters at the beginning but never showing them again, even for a few minutes at the end. Anyway, so a lot of people complained about Wade's sister on this show, Wanda Whipple, played by Eddie Patterson. Guys, the character's supposed to be annoying. All right, that's the point. There's a reason why Wade feels like he doesn't have a home anywhere, like he doesn't fit in anywhere. If his sister is not annoying, if he doesn't have somebody opposing him at home, then why doesn't he just move back home? <laughs> All right? Um, it's not like his mother wouldn't welcome him. His room is still exactly the same, but you have to give the character a reason to do the things that he does. And the reason he doesn't go back home, he doesn't feel like he belongs, is because his sister is a huge antagonist to him. Um, what I didn't like, as far as the fandom or the viewers are concerned, because I don't consider people like this to be fans, was all the harassment towards Eddie that was not cool. She was just doing her job. I thought she was hilarious. I thought she did an amazing job. Um, but to antagonize her and call her names and just be undoubtedly sexist and rude to her 
just because she did a good job playing a character, the character that she was hired to play, is disgusting. And I'm so sick and tired of this toxic social media bullshit. If you don't like something, don't watch it. You have something sexist or racist to say, shut the hell up. Nobody wants to hear it. So one of the real like legitimate issues with the show is how halfway through the series, Wade pretty much hijacks the show and it becomes mostly about him. Um, would, it ha would it have been more appropriate to call it Knuckles and Wade? Yes. Would it have had the same marquee value? Absolutely not. It had to be called Knuckles in order to attract the fan base and the proper audience. Um, right now, as it stands, this is the most, most watched show and the most watched premiere in Paramount Plus history. That would have happened if they would have been honest with the title. So, yeah, it's a little irritating how much of the show Wade occupies, even though it's Knuckles show. I get you, but Adam Pally's really, really good. His story is really compelling. And you have to understand that computer animation of the level and quality that is required to achieve an effect like Knuckles, uh, it's expensive. So I would rather you, them use it sparingly and give us as, as all of those amazing scenes that we saw throughout the show um, with Knuckles rather than have Knuckles all the time and the quality be subpar and not to the, not to the standard that we have come to expect because of the movies. So, the final battle was not good. <laughs> and this really, really hurts because uh, all the other fight scenes throughout the show are excellent. Um, it's just, it feels like they got to the end of the show and they remembered, oh, there's another, another bad guy. Let's bring him in and let's have him fight Knuckles at the very end in a robot suit. And I'm sitting there wondering, why did this happen? Why wasn't he the one to chase Knuckles around from the beginning? Why is he unveiling this big mech suit at the end where he could have used that mech suit from the very beginning? The moment that Knuckles left Green Heels, he could have just hopped into his mech suit and gone over there and captured Knuckles when he was unaware. But no, he saved it till the end. And then he... You can clearly see that he absorbs all of Knuckles' power, leaving him defenseless. And then suddenly the exact same climactic moment from the first Sonic the Hedgehog movie is repeated, where Sonic is out, and then his human friend, says Tom, says something inspirational. He wakes up and he kicks butt. But here, it doesn't work as well because we just saw Knuckles depowered. What gave him the energy or the strength to get back up and fight him some more? And yes, I realize that there's a moment where Knuckles grabs the tendrils from his suit and reabsorbs his energy. But before that, what made him super jump and punch before that? He was supposed to be out. He was supposed to be dying. Um, just... That sequence just needed to be put back in the oven and cook a little longer. It just needed to be developed a little more. It just felt rushed and just hasty. Hasty is the word. It's like I feel like if they would have just developed it a little longer, they could have figured out how to make that work a little better, it, especially when compared to all the amazing action sequences that came before that one. It just did not live up to what came before. Which brings me to the absolute biggest issue with the show. This is the, the worst. Everything else I just said, I can ignore. This cannot be ignored. The bad guy sucks. He is a one-dimensional, crappy, generic bad guy. And the re reason this is an issue in this show is that the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise has great villains or great antagonists. Always have Robotnik, Knuckles, Shadow the Hedgehog, who is going to be played by Keanu Reeves very soon. Very excited. 
So when there's a crappy bad guy who's not interesting, who's just a cookie cutter, uh, template bad guy, it really stands out. And there's no bigger metaphor for how crappy and underdeveloped this character is than the fact that he has no name. Uh, the credits identify him as simply the buyer. That's it. The buyer. Now, on the so some like to argue that the real villains, the actual villains of the show, were Agent Willoughby and Agent Mason, the two renegade gun agents who are trying to steal, to capture, kidnap Knuckles on behalf of the buyer, that they're the real villains. Okay? So that's an excellent point. All the respect in the world if that's your mentality. So he, here, here's my counter argument um, to that. If they put so much time and effort into those characters, then what was the point of the buyer? The buyer could have been like Dr. Claw. You never, you, you could have never seen him. You could have just seen his hand like next to the phone, like answering and all that and not been involved and let those two be the main villains of the show. Um, it's just that character did not need to be there. He really, really didn't. He could, like I said, he could have been an off-screen character and maybe reveal who he was at the very, very end. Maybe it turns out it was Robotnik, you know, at the very, very end and show his face for like a minute. They can afford Jim Carrey for a minute. <laughs> Just absolute waste of space. The final bad guy could have just been a robot that went rogue, that went, that malfunctioned and started just going after Knuckles on his own. And it would have, the scene would have been exactly the same. Have the exact same emotional stakes. Anyway, let's move on to the pros. And of course, the biggest positive thing to happen in this show, the best part, the thing that you should be most excited about is that Knuckles finally got his hat. Oh yeah, looking good, buddy. Also, the Ocho is back. We haven't seen ESPN The Ocho since Dodgeball. What's the connection between this show and that movie? I don't know if you guys know if there's a connection with the director or writer or producer of that movie and this show. Let me know. I really would love to know. Put it in the comment section. I would appreciate it. All right. With all seriousness, let's start talking about real things. Holy crap, is the soundtrack to the show amazing. They created an actual theme song for this, um, an actual Knuckles theme song with lyrics. You can hear it during the credits of episode two. But in what I believe to be a brilliant decision, instead of using that as the main theme, they used The Warrior by Patti Smith. Excellent. Perfect choice for the main theme of this movie. Couldn't have picked it better myself. And then it's just one awesome jam after the other. And I love that one of the recurring themes throughout the show is the idea of Wade putting together mixtapes or mixed CDs, which is taking different parts of albums and putting them together into something better. Um, and that's what the running theme of the entire Sonic film franchise is. Separated these characters, you know, they're misfits, they're directionless, but you put them together and they form a formidable team. Isolated, Wade and Knuckles, they can't quite function in the world very, very well. But you put them together and they're an awesome team and they can move forward together. Um, so having every other moment be highlighted by the type of music that you would use for a mixtape or a mix CD, uh, brilliant, brilliant. And it highlights the main theme of the entire franchise really, really well. And on the subject of music, episode four, things go haywire. And all of a sudden, there's a musical interlude. And as most of you guys know, I'm not big into musicals. And I freaking loved it. <laughs> it was like a suddenly there's a rock opera happening in a bowling alley. 
and Michael Bolton is singing, and Julian Barrett is playing some stadium rock, and it was unbelievable. So much so that I felt that the climax to that musical interlude with Wade as Knuckles fighting the lava monster was a better climax than the actual climax that we got at the very end. That it felt more stakes there than the actual climax in episode six. But that's just my opinion. But this highlights what I believe is one of this show's greatest strengths. That instead of setting some specific rules as to what they could do and couldn't do in the show, they threw caution to the wind and they got really experimental and they allowed themselves to do this show in the style of a very broad comedy, a very broad spoof, um, never taking themselves too seriously um, and just allowing themselves to have fun. And that is the key term for what makes this show work is three hours of fun. And before I close this out, I want to give shout outs to the amazing cast, all of which did an incredible job. Idris Alba, Adam Pally, Stalker Channing, Carrie Elways, Christopher Lloyd as Chief Patakamak, and of course, the legendary Julian Barrett as Jack Sinclair, Bounty Hunter. Uh, whoever made the decision to include that particular comedy genius in this show, that person deserves a raise. And those are my thoughts on Knuckles, the miniseries on Paramount+. Plus. Agree? Disagree? Feel free to say so in the comment section below. And now for the part of the video that you've all been waiting for. My announcements at the very, very end. What am I doing next? Right now, on my Patreon page, my final e-rant on The Bad Batch. So if you want to hear my final thoughts on one of the most amazing shows, one of the most amazing installments of the Star Wars saga. All you have, to, and you're not a patron, all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash Eron and pledge one dollar. That's it. You pledge one dollar, you're helping me to continue creating content, and in return you get bonus videos. Can't beat that with a wind stick. And now for what you really want to hear. What will my, will my next honest review be? The one you've been waiting for, guys. This is it. My next honest review next month will be X-Men 97. Enough said. Thank you for watching and for everything because I couldn't do what I do without you.